Good morning, church. I think you can do better than that. Good morning, church. How's everybody doing? I know the Springboks lost with one point, but I think it's time to get over that, don't you? It's only my wife that's laughing. Okay. <laughs> Good morning to the most beautiful church in the world. Amen. Some of you believe you're beautiful. So if you're visiting us for the very first time, listen, we want to extend a very special welcome to you. And my wife and I would love to shake your hand after the service, so don't rush off. Um, we'd love to meet with you. And uh, listen, it's all about you today. And we really trust that you're going to enjoy the service with us. And also... As always, look, let me look into the camera. Let's say hi to all the people watching from around the world. Let's say hi to our Hartis campus. We love and appreciate you. And uh, we are honored that you are joining us today. Before I start, let me also say and remind you that our Unveiled Bible School is going strong. And it's running a curriculum from Destiny College International. Uh, next up is a survey of the Old Testament that runs over two modules. And um, intake is open to, at the start of every module. So that means you can join whenever it suits you during the year. You don't have to enroll in the beginning of the year. You can do module by module. It's designed in such a way that you can complete your degree over a four-year period. And, uh, but you can, you can just... Go whenever you are ready. Isn't that amazing? Like seriously, is this, is how, is this how it's going to be today? No, it's not, right? So, um, so you can enroll today to join the set starting on 19 July. Um, brochures and registration forms are available at the welcome desk. And guess what? It's only 360 Rand per module. Man, that's not even a bag of Romani creams. Come on, somebody. Like, what an investment. What an investment in your spirit. So I do want to encourage you, please do that. Then also, just a disclaim, disclaimer before I start, I had a mouth up on Monday. If I slur, it's not because I've been drinking. I promise. <laughs> really. The pain meds. On the other hand, I take no responsibility for what's going to come out today. Just saying that. So my tongue is very swollen. I still have stitches in my mouth. So I am struggling a bit. But let's see how it goes, okay? We're going to have a lot of fun today. The preacher said there's no such thing as a perfect woman. Anybody present who has ever known a perfect woman stand up? Nobody stood up. Those who have ever known a perfect man stand up. One elderly gentleman stood up. Are you honestly saying that you knew an absolutely perfect man? The preacher asked, somewhat amazed. Well, I didn't know him personally, replied the little old man. But I've heard a great deal about him. He was my wife's first husband. <laughs> Let me tell you, family, that you should never take... A Sunday service for granted. You know what you hear? Here on a Sunday might save your life during the week. So last week Sunday we spoke about Jesus being our shepherd and that Jesus wants to fulfill the role as our protector. How many of you remember that? So on Thursday Michael and Lucille, Michael our worship director and youth, uh, our youth leader, they were held hostage at, their place of, at her place of work during an armed robbery. Michael, just stand up. Lucille is there with the children's ministry. And there was a shootout between the security company and the robbers. And none of them got hurt. Can we give God praise for that? None of them got hurt. They were cable tied. And, um, and uh, usually the band has rehearsal on, on a Thursday evening and... Uh, luckily, there was no rehearsal on first day. <laughs> and, and I'm like, he was supposed to come and pick up stuff. And I'm like, he said, Pastor, very casually, we were just held hostage. I phone him, like, he starts laughing. I'm like, really? Like, we're so relaxed, Pastor. And the robbers didn't even get what they were trying to steal. So, uh, 
Yeah, thank God for that. You know, never take the power of God's word for granted. Never. You know, when you sit here, you come not to be entertained. You don't even come to be a scholar. You come to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear from him. You feed on God's word. And that's why we always make Jesus our first priority. Amen. So during these dark and difficult times, listen, we all feel like Becky Chele, shut up, <laughs> right? We all feel like that. We don't know who should shut up or what they were saying, but we feel like, listen, can the bad news just stop a bit? Come on, that was funny. <laughs> you know, can the bad news just stop a bit? Right? Listen, Jesus was never shy to share secrets to success. You know that? There are several places in Scripture where God says, do this first. Ever read about that? Do this first. And we must remember that God is a God of order. So certain things should get first, first priority. See, I'm slurring already. Should get first priority. I'm really trying hard. Should get first priority. In, listen, it's ridiculous. The left side of my mouth, it's like, I'm trying to preach with a marshmallow in my mouth. Okay, so <laughs> certain things should get first priority over others. The Bible says it clearly. And when we get those priorities wrong, what happens is that our lives go out of alignment. Have you ever driven a car that pulls to a certain side? I know, women, you don't really care because you, if you see a pothole, you go for it. Like 50 points right there. Gung, gung, you know, all the men say, <laughs> because we fix the tires. Not mentioning any names. It's like the elephant of last week. <laughs> it was a subject throughout this whole week. Even my kids gave me a hard time about that one. If you miss it, go and <laughs> watch it on YouTube. So... So God says, listen, let's make kingdom priorities our priorities. We put them first. And that's when we experience God's blessing in an unprecedented way. We will see from scripture today that when we put grace first, and that's the title of our message today, put grace first, his blessings will overtake us. And Jesus said it. And we're going to look at the scripture a lot today. Let's go to Matthew 6 verse 33. But seek. What's that? First. Not f second. Not third. Not if I feel like it. Not if my work allows it. Not after the family party over the weekend. Seek. First. Moms, that means kids are not first. God, Jesus says, seek this first. Oh, how can you say a thing like that? Jesus said it because you see the blessing it carries. Not my spouse first. Not my family first. Seek first. Not my job first. Seek first. The kingdom of God. Now he qualifies it, and his righteousness. So the Amplified Bible translates that the kingdom of God is his, God's way of doing. God's way of doing. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That doesn't mean for the New Testament believer that you should go and seek to live a righteous kind of life through your own strength now. Because that will contradict what Paul wrote in Corinthians. He says that you have, Boston's, been made the righteousness of God in Christ. You've been made already. If you are a believer, the righteousness of God in Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, you righteous. Look at your other neighbor and say to them, that was your second choice, like you're a surfer. Righteous. 
Pastor, this is not Durban. I don't know where I am. Okay. So, <laughs> seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Meaning, that means for us, family, stand strong in the fact that Jesus has made you the righteousness of God in Christ through His completed work, through His death, burial, and resurrection on the cross of Calvary. Amen? What will happen if you put him first? Jesus says, and all these things <laughs> shall be added to you. Doesn't that sound nice? Shall be added to you. Now he says, therefore do not worry about tomorrow. What day is tomorrow? No, it's a day you're not worrying about. You should really pop some of the pills I'm having at the moment. The revelation is flowing. Right? There's, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So what happens when we put grace first? Number one, when you put grace first, you dethrone that which stands between you and Jesus. You dethrone that which stands between you and Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now may the God of peace himself, the God of peace, he's the God of peace. Family, let that sink in for a moment. Everybody's looking for peace. Put the God of peace first. Put the God, no, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Not halfway, completely. And may your whole spirit, say spirit, your spirit, soul, and body, your whole being, be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to the order that Paul describes here. He says, our spirit is first. Does that make sense? So you are made up, you're a free part being. Remember you were created in the image of God. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's a free part being. He's free, but He's one. Pastor, how does that work? Okay, let me explain to you in terms that you will understand. So if you take an apple pie, but not just any apple pie. You're going to be hungry after this. That apple pie, that the stuff is juicy in the middle. You seeing it? And you cut it into three pieces. So there's three pieces, but the inside is so juicy and so delicious, it's still one. Does that make sense? Some of you should just like go, go like this. Okay? It's three, but it's one. An egg is free, but it's one. Because you've, you've got the shell. You've got the white part that nobody really enjoys. And then you've got that pure piece of delicious cholesterol in the middle. The yolk. It's one egg, but it's three parts. You are one person, but you spirit, soul, and body. Amen? That's what the Bible says. That's why when, when your physical body dies, your spirit is immediately with God. Amen? Amen? But your soul, that's your mind. That's where the battle is. That's where you struggle sometimes, isn't it? So he says, but remember, you should have the priority right. You are a spirit being. But the problem is so many times we want to put our body first. You get what I'm saying? I'm on a diet. I'm on a diet. Hello, Romani creams. Let me, okay, let me just put you in. You get what I'm saying? We want to put our body first. We want to take care of our body first, but we neglect our spirit. It's like the old preacher Charles Spurgeon said, that we feed our body three hot meals a day, but our spirit one cold snack a week. And we wonder why we are struggling. Paul says, listen, put your spirit first. Not your flesh. 
We want to put our needs first. We want to put our opinion first, our comfort first, our happiness first. And then we want to put in the spirit and we wonder, why am I struggling in life? But look at God's order. He says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Then I'll preserve your spirit for you. You are a spirit being first, family. And once you understand this, your life, you will live your life from a perspective of faith. Does that make sense? Now, faith is not intellectual by nature. Faith does not come from the mind, your soul. Faith does, uh, comes from the heart. It comes from your spirit being. Faith helps the mind grasp things that would normally be out of reach. That's why sometimes in your spirit, it's like they explain it so well, uh, uh, Michael and Lasol, that while this whole thing was happening, they had peace. They knew in their spirit, today we're not dying here. We will not be shot. We will not be hurt. Why? Because their spirit was strong. In their spirit, they knew. Amen? Certain things you just, you just know. You just, remember the old Pentecostals? We used to say, I know what I know what I know what I know. I just know God's going to come through for me. I just know God has already healed me. I just know that things will work out okay. Like I just know, I don't care what they shout at us, that this country will prosper. This country will get back on its feet again. This country does have a future and it does have a hope. In the natural, I'm seeing chaos. In the natural, it shouts at us, shut up. Get out. But in my spirit, I know that lawlessness will not prevail. I, I just know. Don't ask me. Why? Because my spirit is one with God's spirit. And I hear what he is saying. Because he'll speak to you in your spirit. In your heart. You see, that's why true faith is superior to reason. But in order to walk by faith, we have to put the spirit first. If you read the newspapers the whole day, you're on your phone the whole day, you're on social media the whole day, your spirit is not going to remain strong. You're going to see all these things. Amen? In other words, we have to put... God's kingdom and His righteousness first. So when you put grace first, everything else, your soul, your body, will be blessed when you get this priority right. Here's the second thing. When you put grace first, you dethrone worry. You dethrone worry. Let's go back to our main passage in Matthew 6.33. But seek first. Say first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now we know what that means. We stand strong in the fact that we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. How do we do that? By looking to what Jesus has accomplished on the cross of Calvary. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. Let's just stop there. I can see you. You are looking at me like, what? Whenever things happen. Whenever things go out of whack, out of balance. What do you do? I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross of Calvary. And there was a divine exchange that took place. And you took my worry and you gave me your peace. You took my sickness and you gave me your healing. You took my unrighteousness if you are struggling with a bad habit, let's, 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 let's be honest. If you struggle with pornography, how do you deal with that? Self-will. <laughs> Come on, man. Self-will ain't going to help you. Just walking it off ain't going to help you. 
I'll, I'll never watch that again. Yes, yes, man, I, I feel so schuldig, pastor, you know. What's going to help you? Because self-will, that's the law. You know, like, the Bible says I shouldn't lust. The Bible says I shouldn't do this. The Bible says I shouldn't do, do this. And, you, and you're just becoming so aware of what? You. That's not putting the kingdom first. That's not putting righteousness first. And the Bible says that the law will stir up sin in your life. So you, I'm not lusting, I'm not lusting. An old lady on a walker was, walk past like, hello mama. I think you dropped your false teeth. You want that? You come here often? It's an old age home, you pervert. Go away. Okay, no, so, you know, I told you, I'm not taking any responsibility for the jokes here. I mean, so. But, but, putting God's kingdom and His righteousness first, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you took my unrighteousness and you gave me your righteousness. Now I walk in a new identity. I am spirit filled. I am blood washed. I am a child of the most high God. I thank you Lord Jesus that you preserve me. Your word says in Thessalonians that you preserve me and you keep me perfect. I am holy because of the blood of your son. That's seeking his righteousness first. So you don't look at self. You look at the cross. Oh, I struggle so much with loneliness. Oh, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm just so lonely and I feel so rejected and this has happened in my life or that has happened in my life. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've given me your Holy Spirit and you are my companion and I will be content and up until the time that it's right for me to meet the right person. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you walk with me. You make me whole. You get what I'm saying, family? That's seeking righteousness first. Look to what Jesus has done for you on the cross. You are cross conscious. And what he's done there for you. Amen. Does that make sense? Is that practical enough? Can you apply that to your life? Amen. And, and, and that's true for any part of your life because Jesus died for it. If you are struggling with finances, that's the way you do it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You became poor that through your poverty, I might become well supplied, rich. Amen. If you are struggling with wisdom, you fa I thank you. That's why we do communion every Sunday. If you are struggling, if you are struggling with, with, with wisdom, Lord, Lord Jesus, I'm really struggling with this project in my business or at my work. I thank you that Christ has been made unto me wisdom. You see, every time you point back to Jesus, He's your answer. He's the one that will carry you through. Look to Jesus. That's what we mean when we say look to Jesus. Not religion. Religion will point the finger in scorn. Religion will tell you what's wrong with you. Religion will give you another seven steps that you know. Like, Dear Lord Jesus, another seven? Amen. So we want to dethrone worry. He says, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, that therefore, that word connects the first statement with this statement. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. That, those are just astonishing words for me. Like, Jesus, do you know what's happening in 2022? Like from 2019 onwards, serious. Yo, ish, damn it. Hmm? Do not worry about tomorrow or 2023 or 2024 or the rest of this year. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Monkey pox, sloth pox, all sorts of pox. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So, 
Listen to what Jesus said. When you seek first his kingdom, the spirit first, his righteousness, he says, all these things will be added to you. Now what's left when you've got all? <laughs> Nothing. Amen? All these things will be added to you. What a promise. Therefore, because you've put grace first, do not worry about tomorrow. Now, here's a question for you. How would your thinking change if you never have to ever worry again? <laughs> Can you imagine a life without worry? Some of you sitting here worrying, did I really switch the oven off before I left? Did I do this? Did I do that? Your mind's already worrying and wondering. When you remove worry, you remove obstacles and limitations. Jesus wouldn't have said, do not worry if it weren't possible. <laughs> when you remove worry, you remove unbelief. That's why so many of you are dreaming, not you guys, the guys watching online. But that's why so many of you dream of winning the lotto or the jackpot. It's not about the money. It's about removing worry from your life. Because you think if you've got the money, you're not going to worry. <laughs> yes, you are. I've had money and I haven't had money. I worried both times. If you've got the money, you worry, how am I going to spend it? What am I going to do? Am I investing it right? Should I really spend on this? Does, is my wife ever going to find out about what I bought? Even it's like, it's, you, you worry. If you don't have it, you worry. You think that that wealth will remove worry from your life. It won't. So when we remove worry, we remove unbelief. And that means all things are possible. How would your thinking change if nothing were impossible for you? Listen, did you, did you hear what just happened? That just removed any excuse from your life. So you can start that business. Yes, you can have that education. You, you can pursue the studies. You can do it. Not you can't do it anymore. Oh, Pastor, I would have started, you know, that dream of mine um, if I lived in America, you know. But here in South Africa, sure, Pastor, I'm as white as milk, man. You know, it is just no future, huh? Or, you know, Pastor, I would, but you know, load shedding. Ish. I don't think now's the time to do it. Now, Pastor, I would have studied, you know, but, ish, you know, I, I come from the township and, and, and it's impossible. And no, 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 no. When you remove worry from your life, all of a sudden, all things become possible to those who believe. And there's no more excuse. This is the country of opportunity. There's more opportunity in this nation than in any other nation. Let me tell you, God's got a future and a hope. And he's placed that dream on the inside of you for a reason. Come on. Don't go quiet on me now. There's a future for you. There's no, listen. So, <laughs> so many times people thought things were impossible until it got achieved. Until their thinking changed. Somebody just challenged the status quo. Listen, 200 years ago, we never dreamt of flying. Until two brothers decided, wait a minute. Maybe if we just apply our mind and our talent towards this, maybe, just maybe, it is possible to fly. And somebody did it. 
Now, we were born into that. Right? For us, it's nothing new. Great, then we fly. But flying faster than the speed of sound? Never, never. That's impossible. Until somebody did it. Until somebody tried it. And they broke the sound barrier and they went through the speed of sound. It was possible because somebody thought it was possible. Family, those of you sitting here, do you realize what God has deposited on the inside of you? Stop talking yourself down. I'm talking to somebody here. Stop telling yourself it can't be done. Stop entertaining lies from Satan in your life. God has given you an idea. God has given you a purpose. You should pursue it because he plays it on the inside of you. We don't know who's sitting here. We don't know who's listening. I'm telling you the cure for cancer is going to come. It's living inside someone. I'm telling you the greatest businesses are yet to be born. It's living in someone. Yes, the young people. No, you can be here sitting 80 years old and you just sit with that dream on the inside of you. Just unlock it, man. Be a Caleb. Who doesn't care about your age? I always tell this. My, my, <laughs> did I ever tell you, last, last week I told you the story about the elephant. Let me tell you another story. So I was dating my wife. And we were getting to know one another. And I walked in, in their home, and the one day I walked in there, <coughs> excuse me, and I saw this guitar. And Casanova, you thought, I'm going to impress her now. I know about five, six chords. I'm going to impress my wife. And very casually, very coolly, I'm like, uh, wow, this is a beautiful guitar. Can I have a look at it? She says, yeah, sure. And I picked it up. And, uh, -loo 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 -loo, you know. And I thought I was a legend. And she says, like, that's beautiful. But her mom walked in at that moment. Oh, you play guitar. Ja, Tani. <laughs> Do you know this? And she took the guitar like. <laughs> and she, would, she went crazy. I was like, whoa. Turns out, my mother-in-law started learning classical guitar at the age of 40. And by that stage, when I told this, uh, the, the time of the story, she was heading up the classical guitar society of South Africa. Yes, I don't do that anymore. Right? <laughs> I don't flex. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I just keep quiet. <laughs> I really felt like an idiot. <laughs> wow, that's a. You want to play again? No, no, just put it back in the box. Thank you. <laughs> Let's just keep it. I don't. No, my hands are dirty. Sorry. <laughs> but at the age of 40, she decided to start something new. And then at the age of 60, she's decided to start something new. At the age of 70, she decided she's going to learn Hebrew. Classical Hebrew. You never too old. The other day she was on Quela. She's 80 years old. You never too old. You never too young. You've got God living on the inside of you. Amen. Here's my last point. When you put grace first, you dethrone regret. There are four things that cripple people that I've found through the years. Guilt, shame, regret, and bitterness. Over the years that I've worked with people, I saw these four things cause more havoc than circumstances in their lives. Amen. 
So from a medical perspective, your body responds to what's going on on the inside of you. Many sicknesses and illness are because people carry these things on the inside of them. Family, that's why we have to put our spirit first. It is only through your spirit that you can deal with guilt, the shame, the regrets, and the bitterness on the inside of you. Psychology can help you with some of these issues, but it cannot heal you. Amen? Only Jesus can heal you. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. In what things? What's left when you've got all? Nothing. And be in health. Now he says this, just as your soul prospers. Your soul will never prosper if your spirit is not prospering. But this scripture proves that our inside world affects our outside world. Before there were chaos in your life, that chaos, listen to me, reigned in your soul. Because the way your predominant thoughts go is the way your life will go. The way your heart belief goes is the way your life will go. If you are always thinking negative, believing negative, seeing the negative, you're going to be negative. Come on. But if we turn it around... And you start believing what scripture says about you. Your life is going to turn around family. It might not be immediate. There's no such thing as instant coffee. But it will happen. Amen. I have to confess. I drank instant coffee this week. And I enjoyed it. I feel so ashamed. Thanks. I can feel the judgment in that statement coming from you, Vicus, because you're a purist like me. I know. <laughs> it hurt more because it came from you. <laughs> I love you, bro. <laughs> Family, regret will have the same effect on your body as bitterness. Why? Because they both tied to the past. Did you get that? The human heart without Jesus has a default setting, we said last week, that always goes towards death. Now listen to this beautiful, I just want to build something for you here in closing. Is that okay? This is going to blow your mind. This is really going to be good. So I need to look at some, some scripture here. And then I'm going to build a final foundation for you and I'll let you go with that. Okay. In the next four hours. Romans 8 verse 37. That was a joke. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. What makes you a conqueror in life? The fact that Jesus loves you. Well, pastor, I'm not the most lovable person. He still loves you. Well, pastor, you don't know what I've done this past year. Man, I've been a naughty boy. He still loves you. Nothing can change God's love for you. Nobody's so despicable that God will stop loving them. Come on. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Once again, it points to the cross and what Jesus has done there. So here are lists of nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. Death, life, angels, principalities, no created thing. Even instant coffee, because can separate me from the love of God. Amen? But in this list, Paul says this. Things present, things present, sorry. Do I have an interpretation for those tongues? Those swollen tongues. Amen. No things to come. Amen. Things present, no things to come. 
Then there is another list Paul mentions at the end of 1 Corinthians 3. But to understand this list better, you have to use your imagination. Now, imagine yourself sitting in your lawyer's office. But this is a good meeting. Because he's reading you the last will and testament of that rich relative in Europe that we're all dreaming about. That has left you inheritance. Now the contract reads. 1 Corinthians 3.21 For all things are yours. Wow. Come on. All things are yours. Don't sneak up on me like that. Bro, I'm on medication. I cannot take responsibility for what's going to happen. My ninja skills. I am fast. I might be big. I'm fast. Okay. I'm just like the next one. Like, I'm just, well, <laughs> okay. For all things are yours. Then he continues. He says, the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All are yours. And you are Christ. And Christ is God. <laughs> Have you ever saw, see that scripture? That's tremendous. Can you imagine that? You inherit the world. What? The whole thing, Pastor? I just wanted a nice home says it's yours and on top of that life is yours and apparently death belongs to you as well and now this belongs to you and me as children of God he says things present things to come I'm struggling to get my head around this If something is yours, it means that it's in your control. It means you have stewardship over it. Now my head is spinning, just thinking about it. And sometimes the best thing is just to say, Amen, Hallelujah, thank you Lord. And not try and figure it out, right? Because this is a pretty big statement. God is saying to you and to me, this morning, come on now. Whether you are educated or uneducated. Whether you are employed or unemployed. Whether you think you're smart or not so smart. Not the brightest crayon in the box. Whether you're good looking or hard to look at. Listen. <laughs> All things are yours. Through Christ Jesus. You have control over it. And, 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 and he says this, the things present and the things to come. Now it becomes obvious what is left out, what is not yours, and that is the past. Come on now. The past does not belong to you. Why is that past Norman? Because you don't have the legal access to the past because it's already been purchased. Every time we revisit the events of yesterday, apart from the blood of Jesus, we are visiting something that's no longer true. Isn't this astounding? We open up ourselves to a spirit of deception because we visit something that is no longer in the condition that we remember it. You have the future and you have the present, but the past has been dealt with by the completed work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary family. Stop torturing yourself over the past. That is why the shepherd will lead you to protection. He will lead you to abundance. He will lead you to peace. He will lead you to strength and love. But he will never lead you back to the past. Never. As children of God, never. 
the only thing that will lead you to the past, listen to me very carefully now, and listen to me, South Africa, is a spirit of bitterness and deception. Now think of how scary it is that we have political leaders whose whole agenda and manifestos are built around the past rather than the future. We will not move forward as a nation if we keep holding on to the past. Never. You will never move forward as a child of God as long as you hold on to the past. Never. It does not belong to you. Well, well, pastor, there's been some great injustices in the past. Yes, long before our time even. Long before apartheid, there was injustice. Long before colonialism, there was injustice. Long before that, even, there was injustice. Man, there was injustice the moment sin came into this world. We are spirit beings. And our our, our future is not in the hands of politicians. It's not in the hands of a political party. It's in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And once you sit in a meeting like this, once you are a child of God, once you call yourself a Christian, there's no longer black, white, colored in here. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's no race, there's only grace. We are children of the Most High God. We cannot think like the world, we cannot act like the world. Can I prove a point? We might get into trouble, but I'll just blame it on the medication. This past week's events, when the Cameron guy made the point that he was making very passionately, And our minister of police, his first things, his first words, you talk to me like I'm a garden boy. If you've seen the video. Excuse me, what has that got to do with the crime in the country? Nobody referred to any garden manager there. Nobody referred to landscaping. Right? Nobody. Can you see how the past will always tie you to bitterness? And I'm sure there's deep hurts in our minister's life. I'm, I'm sure there's been trauma there. And I don't, I don't minimize the injustice that happened during the apartheid years. But my point is, the past will always tie you to bitterness. It will always tie you to hurt. And that's the devil's agenda. And maybe for you it's not political. Maybe it is sexual. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's emotional. Maybe you were abused. Maybe you were hurt. It does not belong to you anymore. What belongs to you through Jesus is the present and the future. Meaning that He will touch you now with healing and that you've got a future and a hope. That you do not have to live with that label, abused, divorced, bankrupt. Whatever the label the enemy wants to hang around your neck. You will not have to live with that label anymore. Come on, can we give God praise for that? Amen. That's why regret is so dangerous. That's why the devil wants to keep you in the past. That is his modus operandi. I believe by the Spirit of God that as we put grace first, we will see supernatural manifestation of his power. Amen.
And I, I know I've, I've gone to the forbidden place. Politics. My idea was never politics. Let me just say that. We're not going to toy toy load shedding away. We're going to vote it away. So every South African go to the voting stations. Amen. It's our responsibility to have an orderly country. Because that's God's heart for South Africa. Not what we are experiencing now. What we're experiencing now is an injustice family. It's complete injustice. Amen. But we put God's kingdom first. All these things will be added to you. All these things. I want every eye closed and every head bowed. I believe that God wants to deliver, deliver, not liver. <laughs> deliver us from regret, from the past, from pain. In, in my spiritual eye, I see how people walked into this place with labels around your neck. Not visible, invisible. There's a label raped. There's a label abused. There's a label regret. There's a label mistake. There's a label rejected. I want you to turn your palms towards heaven for a moment. Receive his healing power throughout this place. I believe that the Spirit of God is in this room. I believe that He's touching hearts and that He's touching lives. Receive His healing flow. As it ministers and as it rains gently upon everybody under the sound of my voice. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive healing. Receive wholeness. Receive a brand new beginning. Lord, I pray for every heart that's hurting, that you will bring comfort. You said, bless are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. I pray for everyone that has felt the sting of rejection, of a sharp tongue. That has felt the sting of past hurts of abuse. Let healing flow right now. And I thank you Lord that as your word says that you've transferred us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your light. That right now you will come and that you will transfer your people from the past. And show them through your Holy Spirit a brand new future. Let hope arise in their hearts in Jesus' name. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and reign over this place. Come and reign over this place right now in Jesus' name. Come and reign over this place in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. While every eye is closed and every head is bowed, and nobody is looking around or moving around at this moment, so we just respect one another. If you are here this morning and you say to me, Pastor, I hear what you're saying. But, but I don't know Jesus and I want to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. Then right now, this is your moment. And I, let me just put your heart at ease. We're not here to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to stand or come forward or anything like that. I just want to speak to you for a moment. Because in your heart, you know, and you're watching online, in your heart, you know 
that you do not have a relationship with Jesus. I'm not asking if you grew up in church. I'm not asking if your parents were Christian or if you even attended church. I'm asking you, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Was there a time in your life where you've invited Him to be your Lord and your Savior, where you've put the kingdom first, where you've put His righteousness first? And if the answer is no, then it means that this morning you've got an opportunity just through a simple prayer to make Him your Lord and your Savior. It's not about church attendance or church membership. It's about a relationship with Jesus. Maybe that is you this morning. In your heart, you know I'm talking to you. In your head, there's a bit of a battle. Or maybe you are here and you say to me, you know what, Pastor? As, you know, I've, I've, I've prayed that prayer at some stage in my life, but as the days, the months, the years have gone by, I've backslidden. My spiritual life is a mess. And I don't want to leave the same way I came. Can you please pray with me? Can you include me in that prayer? It will be a privilege and an honor for me to pray for you. Because that's what it takes. A simple prayer. Do, do, do I have to change my life, Pastor? Do I have to change the way I dress, the, the way I talk? The way? No, no, no. That's outward behavior modification. What we're talking about is heart transformation. Pastor, that's me. Please, can you include me in that prayer? I don't want to leave the same way I came. If that is you this morning and you say, Pastor, please, can you include me in that prayer? Just for me, can you just quickly put up your hand so I can see and then I'll, you can put it down again and then I'll pray for you. Just say, Pastor, that is me. Please pray for me. Just quickly raise your hand so I can see where you are at. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you watching online, if you respond, just pray this prayer out loud with us. Just say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. Right now, I receive the free gifts of grace and righteousness in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that I can call you Father in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand all over this place. For those of you watching online, for those of you in here, if you've raised your hand or wanted to raise your hand, please, from the ushers, just grab, or from the table there in the, in the foyer, just grab a little booklet um, that explains the decision that you've made. And it will help, it will guide you. There's some guides there. And I believe that God's going to minister greatly to you through that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we've come to the best part of the service because the Bible says it's more blessed to than it is to receive. And I thank God that I pastor the most generous church in the world. And this morning, we've got Pastor Mary. Pastor Mary, let's give her a hand. Some of you know her. She's been a great help to the church and uh, just part of our team. And Pastor Mary is going to come and take up the offering real quick. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Good morning, church. Thank you, Pastor Norman, Pastor Kada, for giving me this opportunity to receive the offering and the tithe. I don't take it for granted. Well, I'm going to just read from John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. I want to speak about a woman who carries my name, Mary. <laughs> the Bible says from John chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was who had been dead whom he had raised from the dead there they made him supper and Martha saved but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spine 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 net, anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair mm. and the house was filled with the fragrance of oil. I love this passage of scripture in the midst of supper mm, Mary gave a remarkable gift 
to Jesus. It wasn't unusual to wash the feet of the guest, but it was unusual to use very costly oil to do it and remarkable to wipe hair with it. You know, women, we treasure our hair, right? So now I, will, I must use my hair to wipe this dude's feet. Hey, excuse me. So when a guest entered the home, usually the guest's feet were washed with water and the guest's head was anointed with a dab of oil or perfume. Now here is Mary. She gets this precious anointment and anoints the feet of Jesus. She considered her precious gift only good enough to anoint his feet. How about that? And yet this oil, it is said that it was imported from the mountains of India and it was very expensive, worth a year's salary. I love the way John tells the story because the other books don't say what he says. John says, um, there was the fragrance of oil in the house. So this morning I ask you as you give, what is your giving doing? Because I believe Mary's giving made a mark. The mark is that the whole entire room was filled with that uh, uh, perfume oil. Three things. Number one, there was a financial mark that the giving that Mary gave. So I ask you this morning as you give, do you treasure Jesus more than your stuff? Is your devotion to the Lord costing you financially? If others looked at how you spend your money, would they conclude that you must love Jesus a lot? What mark is your giving doing? Financial mark. Number two, social mark. Do I treasure Jesus more than my pride? Mary didn't use a towel. Rather, she wiped the Lord's feet with her hair. Mary forgot about herself as she was giving. Do I think about myself when I'm giving or am I thinking about the Lord? She forgot about her hair. Like I said, we treasure our hair so much. We don't want rain to touch the hair. But here she is. She forgot about everything else. Her look, she did not care who was looking at her. It was uncalled for for a woman to let the hair down. But she lets her hair down and she gets on the floor and she wipes Jesus' feet with her hair. What mark is your giving doing? Mary, I believe, cast public opinion to the wind. She let her hair down and she did what needed to be done. Do I treasure Jesus more than my pride? So am I concerned about what others are going to say as I give? But what matters is that is what Jesus thinks about my selfless devotion to him. And finally, criticism mark do I treasure Jesus more than my reputation Judas led the attack but the other disciple echoed his criticism saying why this waste why are you giving <laughs> after all we are not allowed to tithe hallelujah I'll leave that to Pastor Norman the money could have benefited many poor families they said but instead, it was wasted on Jesus. Or was it wasted? Count on it. If you give yourself without reserve to Jesus, you will be criticized. And the loudest criticism will come from some who are close to you, including church members. Isn't it so, Pastor Doma? Mary did what she did because she had a perception of Jesus. She knew what she was doing. So this morning as we give, let us think about the mark that our giving is doing. So I remind you that the ushers are not going to come around with the baskets. They'll be there at the door as we walk out. And if you want to give via um, EFT, the banking details are available on the screen. There's also Snapscan. And if you don't carry cash, there will be um, card machines at the um, welcome desk. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you. 
we submit everything, Father, that we have back unto you. As we have heard this morning, we have been reminded that we need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. So this morning we are going to give knowing that Father as we give, we serve a great God. We serve a God whose name is Jehovah Jireh. He will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. Father, we thank you that we lack nothing as we sow into the kingdom of God, as we push the kingdom agenda ahead we know that you alone you will take care of each one of us and so we are so happy that we give into your kingdom thank you father bless every harm that shall give bless even those that do not have as you continue to bless us we remember that we are blessed to be a blessing thank you jesus in Jesus' name we pray amen and amen Amen. You guys glad you came? What a beautiful Sunday. Amen. Just sit like this. And I'm going to proclaim a blessing over us. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon each and every one of you. The Lord's favor surrounds you as a shield wherever you go in this coming week. Thank you, Lord, that in this coming week you keep us and our loved ones safe. You keep us safe from harm, safe from any attack, safe from any disease, safe from any virus or mutated virus, safe from any plan of the enemy. We thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you open up doors that we need to walk through, close doors that we need to stay out of. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that we are so aware of your precious love for us. And Lord, that we, we will see it manifest in preferential treatment wherever we go in this coming week. The Lord bless you as you go. Thank you so much, church. Bless you guys. Let's say goodbye to all our online viewers. Let's make a big noise. Bless you guys. Thank you so much. If you have visited us for the first time in person today, Pastors Norman and Gerda would love to meet you in person. Please come and say hello after the service. We are partnering with Belly to Brain and the BNI Bizmasters for a sandwich day this coming Friday from 7 to 11 a.m. in the morning at Dopio Zero Cradle Stone. Our Unveiled Bible School is going strong and running the curriculum by Destiny College International. Next up is a survey of the Old Testament that runs over two modules. Intake is open at the start of every module. So enroll today to join the set starting on the 19th of July. Brochures and registration forms are available at the welcome desk. If you have any questions to ask or would like to contact us for any reason, please make use of our contact details from email, phone or text. As usual, our intercessors are standing by after the service if you would like someone to pray with you in person. Please help us tidy the hall by dropping your used communion cup in one of the bins at the exit. Let's take our vision with us as we go. We want to see Jesus Christ unveiled in every hardened home. Have a great week.